Yo, 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 everyone, welcome to Student Gateway. Hope you guys are doing well, having a great time. So, today we are here with another exciting opportunity, and this time this opportunity is from Canada. So, if you're new to our channel, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Do hit the bell icon as well so that you don't miss any of the upcoming updates. Without any delay, let's just talk about today's video. But before starting today's video, do hit the like button as well on this video. So, in this video, we'll be talking about when your Canada graduate scholarship. This is a, um, we have listed, uh, uh, if you check out the Canada scholarships and the grants, Canada offers very little grants and this grant is one of the biggest grant from Canada to all over the students all over the world. If you want to study in Canada if you, and if you're looking for best uh, masters actually, this is not for bachelors, masters or PhD uh, or leading to PhD or combined MA, PhD or whatever, MPhil, but higher education. This is the perfect scholarship. This is a fully funded scholarship and the, uh, the procedure is kind of tricky and a lengthy process. I'll be explaining everything in this video. You don't need to worry about. <clears throat> but keep remembering, if you want Canada, this is the only scholarship I would recommend which is right now going on and which is overall, if you look at the annual schedule of Canadian scholarship, this is the biggest scholarship. Recently, a student of student gateway applied to the scholarship and uh, when he applied he got selected and when the uh, university or the institution asked him for further documents he doesn't have the further documents in his hand he applied uh, with false documents and when they wanted the verification he called me he reached out to me and said so many different things and i was shocked like why did you apply it at the first place and now you don't uh, have the documents and you have ruined the place you have wasted the time of your time and um, some of the students who were eligible did not get selected because of you. So please don't do that. Venier Canada Graduate Scholarship is a scholarship by the Government of Canada. Finally, applicants for the Venier Graduate um, Scholarship 2022 are being accepted by the Canadian Government. Moreover, 166 scholarships are available each year, like this year as well. Venier Graduate uh, Canada Graduate Scholarship Canadian Citizen International Students, Permanent Residents, Canada are eligible for this scholarship. Thus, Study is Canada is free of cost on this scholarship, particularly on this scholarship. It's not free all overall. So also the very when your scholarship is uh, for doctoral PhD combined MA PhD MD PhD masters leading to PhD masters leading to PhD uh, whatever the government of Canada is uh, funding this overall scholarship furthermore you will be able to study in any Canadian university supported by the when Canada uh, if you know about the Erasmus or have you applied to Erasmus or you have selected to Erasmus this is the scholarship this scholarship is works like the same the process of this uh, Erasmus scholarship and Veneer Canada scholarship is almost the same. Uh, three years the duration Government of Canada funded by Government of Canada countries Canada 3rd of November is applied last day to apply for this program. Um, we have 166 numbers of scholarships so which you can get and you can be one of those lucky ones. If you talk about the fields these are the list of fields which are available. If you talk about the list of the universities this is the complete list of universities. If you talk about the scholarship duration uh, it's three years as I said but you can further go and understand perfectly what, what they are trying to say. Let me just uh, give you a short hint. Uh, the funding last time last uh, for the last three years in total and you can pursue an MS that leads to PhD or PhD into it. However, if you want to pursue an MS that leads to a PhD program, it will take you more than three years. However, when your money is only available for three years program. As a result, in the case of MS leading to a PhD, you must seek a further financing for additional years. Perhaps a Canadian academic can provide some light on the subjects. However, if you want to pursue a PhD, you can do for three years if you work full time. So if you talk about the coverage, so if you talk about the coverage, the awards are worth 50,000 every year. This sum will cover up 1% tuition fees, universities fees, dorm fees, living allowance, travel allowance, and so many different things. You have understood and, and all, I think already know that uh, if we talk about the higher education in Canada, it is very costly for international students. If you're a Canadian citizen, then it's uh, not that costly as well. So general eligibility criteria for this uh, scholarship, if you, you will have to be a Canadian citizen, or international student only one Canadian institution may nominate you and it must have obtained a one-year CGS quota what's this quota I'll let you know please read the whole eligibility criteria right here 
and how we are supposed to apply we just need to kind of click on this link right here i have opened up all these links now let's just go to these links and check out what are how we are supposed to apply i have talked about the quota so these are the list of the universities and all these universities are from canada different states but within canada like for example if you talk about brock university brock universities has the received a quota of one so a single student applied to brock university will get selected and get the scholarship and this is uh, i think it's three right here so it's not one it's three so if we go total for three funding agencies it is nine as you can see three here one here and one 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 so as you can see if you talk about uh, these are the year wise quota so you have to check that out for example if we talk about the uh, montreal university it has four uh, 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 four seats available till the year 2024 and same goes for all this so you have to check out for example if you talk about university of toronto the the um, eligibility criteria of university of toronto is tough it's not that easy but university of toronto is the university which has uh, kind of received so many different uh, spots as you can see right here it has received it will receive 265 sp spots now we'll if it, if we, uh, we will say like uh, in yearly they have 165 um, uh, scholarships then how university of uh, toronto is getting 265 it is getting 265 uh, in not uh, in a single year it is getting as you can see it has been counted from 2022 to 2024 so they have been all counting so you have to check and choose a university wisely which has a good quota and good numbers and a, uh, a criteria where you perfectly fit in this is the first point now let's just go and check out the um, what's the criteria what they need right so you should be from this quota i have uh, already told you you should be having a degree yes i have completed no more than 20 months of a full-time study uh, in their doctoral program uh, have not been no more than 32 months of full-time study in their doctoral program so you have to keep that these things in mind as well and these are some of the other few points which you have to bear in mind before applying if you talk about the eligibility of program of study an eligible doctoral um, program must include a significant research component that leads to the completion of a thesis major research project the assertion scholarly publication performance and so many different things so if we talk about the number of months, I have already told you guys what are the number of months. This is the eligibility to hold a various CGS quota. I have already explained that. Part-time studies, multiple applications, so many different things. So now let's go to the next page. And this page is how you are supposed to be nominated for this particular scholarship. Just need to kind of click on this link and you have to, you will come up to this page right here. This is the competition process. Um, the student informs the faculty of graduate studies at the selected institute of their intent to apply for this program. The institute is, uh, initiates the nomination process by contacting the desired candidates. These are the two ways. We'll be going, uh, you can also go for whatever the way you want, but we'll be going from uh, step A. Applications are prepared uh, by the student submitting to the nominating institute by their internal deadline. Uh, set in the research net by nominating institution every institution has its own deadline so the nominating institute performs the internal candidate selection process the nominating institute follows recommended uh, nominations to the veneer banting secretariat uh, by november 2 2021 and this is the whole process they are talking about if you talk about the um, let's just make things simple this is the uh, portal in which you are supposed to apply. You just need to kind of click on English. And uh, I have already created an account. You can easily create an account by clicking on register. Uh, but after creating an account, you just need to kind of go and sign in. I have, you will be not coming up to this page. You will be coming up to a page where you will see a list of different opportunities. But in the end, you will see when your Canada graduate scholarship, you have to choose that and click on it and these uh, now let's just come back to this page right here so these are the complete many uh, application package includes all of these things these are the things these are the things this is this is the list and they have also giving you the form like uh, how you're supposed to complete your cv research contribution 
leadership statements, so many different things. Click on these things and try to identify, understand perfectly well. Um, if you don't want to click on them, you can just go and, for example, create a CV, right? So they have listed you how you can create a CV and how you can do whatever they want you to do. Keep your things, keep these things in mind. And after completing all these things, you have to come up to this page right here. Identify area of research, participants, so many different things. Uh, but the thing is, you cannot go to the second step until you have um, uh, completed uh, whatever. Like I'm just going for educational purpose only. So I have completed this and now your work was successfully saved. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, now let's just go right here. And as you can see, tick, I can now go enter degree information, proposal information, other application material, confirm documents and preview consent. And this is kind of it. So this is the overall whole process about Canada. Keep in mind that applying to Canada is uh, not a piece of cake. You have to, and one another thing which I would like to include is, um, research net will not tell you the exact eligibility criteria of the institution you are applying to. If you are applying to University of Toronto, then you have to Google University of Toronto, search for a program, check out the eligibility criteria. If you fit into that eligibility criteria, then you are supposed to apply. You are not supposed to be applying to these universities uh, with a blindfold. Don't do that. You will be wasting your time and the time of those institutions as well. So this is it from today. If you guys have still any doubts, questions or difficulties, do contact us in the comment sections below. Till then, thank you so much for watching and all the very best.